Hi everyone, I'd like to introduce a new series I'll be producing, Tool Talk. In this series I will discuss various, mostly vintage, tools owned by myself and my father. I'll give some details about them as well as their merits and my opinions on them. In this episode of Tool Talk I'll be discussing metal cutting circular saws. This is one such of example most people are probably familiar with. It is the Milwaukee 8 inch metal cutting saw. It's a good saw. There's few issues with this saw, but it's also like $300. I plan on showing you today a cheaper alternative that works nearly as well for a fraction of the cost. This is Black & Decker 977 Worm Drive Circular Saw. It was not designed for cutting metal. It was designed for cutting wood. It does well at that. However, if you look at the RPM of this saw, it's 4300 for a seven and a quarter inch blade. On the Milwaukee, its RPM is 3700 on an eight inch blade. If you do the calculation, that surface feet per minute is close to the same amount. And in metal cutting circular saws, surface feet per minute is a very important consideration, which is why you see a lot of Amazon reviews for 14 inch blades complaining about them because they were burnt up because the users do not realize that 14 inch blades are made for carbide cutting circular saw specifically and not their grandpa's old chop saw. They will be burned up in a chop saw. RPMs have to be right. This saw, the RPMs are about right. So if you got the saw, you need a blade. And this is an Evolution 20 tooth multi cutter blade. It sells on Amazon for 20 bucks. And it says the rated RPM is 39.50. Um, but truth be told, I think they just base that RPM based off the RPM of their fastest saw because they're the same. They also have a dedicated steel blade. This one does aluminum, wood, and plastic, but their dedicated steel blade is $35, rated up to 5,800 RPM. But I'd still run it on the slowest saw you can find, like a worm drive, because they seem to last longer. Only issue with this blade is that the arbor is 20 millimeters, and the saw arbor is five-eighths of an inch. So you need a bushing. Turn this up on the lathe and uh, if you don't have a lathe, step one, get a lathe. I don't mean to say that in a condescending way, but uh, if you're trying to save money by doing projects like this, a lathe will save you so much time and so much money. But these can be bought. They're six dollars for a five-eighths to twenty millimeter adapter. And you'll also need this. The arbor on the worm drive saw has this star on it for star blades, which of course the evolution blade does not have. And it will sit on top of the star, but as you can see the contact area there, it's, it's not a lot of contact. So um, when you're pushing it through heavy metal, you know, I like to have a little bit more contact than that. So this washer goes on top of there, making that the primary contact surface. And then the blade sits on top of that. So just to recap that, if that wasn't clear, put the arbor in, put the main washer, the, um, the washer that spreads out the load on the blade in first. And then you put the little washer the shaft um, size compensator <laughs> and then put the blade on top of that. Okay. Then goes on the blade washer that comes with the saw. And then the bolt, left hand threaded, lefty squeezy, righty easy, and tighten it up. Push the button. Good sound. Just snug it, not too tight. It's a safety feature that the blade will slip so long as you don't have it too tight. That's all there is to installing it. Let's try it out. Well, I should mention we're using this saw and really a lot of shop tools. Eye protection is a must. Hearing and hand protection are strongly recommended. This one doesn't have the guard like the Milwaukee and hot chips will hit you. 
Also wear a 100% cotton t-shirt because polyester kind of melts. Perfect. So here's the first test cut we'll be doing. This is a piece of 2x2 two by, two by quarter inch angle wire. Uh, I'd say it's a pretty common item in our shop, maybe in yours. Here's what the cut looks like. Um, it's got a little fat, a lot of little facets in it, which is just characteristic of these blades. And uh, it's been about 20 seconds since I cut it. Yeah, not hot at all. This one's been cut twice, and I can, it, it's been like 30, 40 seconds. It's, it's still not hot. So uh, it may not perform as well as the Milwaukee with the endurance blade, with the eight-inch endurance blade. But most all of our blades in this category have died from breaking teeth and not by wearing out. So if you break the teeth on that blade, you lose $20. If you break the teeth on the other blade, you lose $60. Um, now if you are actually wearing blades out legitimately, the endurance blade will probably last you three times longer. But if you're also going through that many blades, you can probably justify the actual saw that's designed for it. Let's try something else. All right, so I almost didn't post this next part because of the upcoming failure, but I think it's important to be honest and transparent when you're promoting something, even if it's your own content. So just wait till the end and I'll give a conclusion. Okay, our second test will be a piece of three quarter inch cold rolled steel, round bar. Well, I blitzed the blade. It's missing like half its teeth. So apparently I didn't like that piece of metal. That's why I like cheap blades. So in conclusion, this may work for you for thin metal. Don't try weird stuff because you'll blitz a blade. Under quarter inch, I, I think that's what it says on the blade. I think that's a good recommendation. That one's dead. So why did the blade fail? Well, it could have been any number of reasons. It could have been that the saw didn't like the round material. It could have been it was too thick. Um, the blade could have slipped on the washer. But based on the way the blade bounced when it hit it and the way it felt like, I'm going to say that the material was wrong, whether it was too hard or whatnot. The saw didn't like to cut it. So if anything, I don't think the failure hurts my point. I think it helps it because that failure would have likely happened on any handheld circular saw. So if it's going to happen, it might as well have happened to the cheapest blade, right? If you're going to try this, I can't guarantee it will work, but it probably will. You just have to be careful. These blades are really bad blades to use for mystery metal because one little incident and they're completely done and that's a really expensive blade gone. So if you're going to use carbide tipped blades on metal you should really stick to ordinary construction steel be it angle iron or C-channel or um, standard old pipe unistrut stuff like that it can handle and they'll do it fine and they'll do it for a long time. 
But when you start trying mystery metals like I do, when you get overzealous, y you might break one. So I don't recommend the saw if this any of these saws if you do a lot of weird recycled mystery metal. But if you buy all your steel from the steel man every time you go to make a project, it's a decent solution. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see you next time.